Well, hello again folks. Hope you're all still fit and well out there and welcome to another video. Now for those folks who don't want to see me building a hide or setting the decoy and bait out and so forth, then just fast forward to about the 3 minute 25 mark for where the action roughly starts. And for those of you who want to follow me along in my little outing, stay tuned hey. For those of you who are interested, the one man hide I'm setting up is called the Bush, which I bought from Bushware.com many years ago. And the ghillie type net I'm putting around it is from Nighthawk. Now, I've shot on this ground for years. And uh, I was on it, oh, it must have been about a month before this. And didn't do very well, there didn't seem to be much about and I got, I think a couple of magpies and a hooded crow. But the farmer is in full lambing mode now and he asked me can you come back up again because there's a lot of hooded crows about it now. So I don't like to let the man down so I appeared this really frosty morning, set the hide up, put a dead rabbit out for bait. To be honest I wasn't really expecting much as I neither heard or saw that many hooded crows the last time I was here. But boy was I wrong. The rifle I have with me is my CZ527 Varmint chambered in 17 Hornet and bedded into a form stock. You can hear birdsong up here that I haven't heard at home for years, like the cuckoo, curlews and lapwings. It's a real pleasure. The first bird to appear at the bait isn't a hooded crow, it's a magpie that sneaks in low from the right hand side. Now, like the hooded crows, we can shoot magpies here under our general licenses for the protection of livestock, but I'm not going to because if I start shooting at magpies now, I'll probably scare off the hooded crows. The scope that I'm using is a Meopta 4-16x44 tactical, which I've mounted a Tacticam solo to it on their FTS unit to film through the scope like this. Thankfully the magpie isn't feeding too long when a hooded crow drops in looking at its fair share. Oh boy, there's quite an echo off that little hornet on a still frosty morning. I waited a good 5 minutes or so, and since I could neither hear or see any other hooded crows about, I decided to go out and set that bird I'd just shot up as a decoy, because I didn't bring any with me that morning. Oh, this might be a mistake, because I've just heard a hooded crow in the background. Well, it's too late now. Thankfully though, it didn't put the other birds off, and I quickly have a second crow down for a look.
Well, that's one way of keeping your rear end warm in the frost, I suppose. Anyhow, since setting the first bird up as a decoy seemed to work so well, I decided to quickly set up the second one also. Plus I needed to give the hide a wee bit of an airing. As you can see, it did take a wee while for another bird to turn up, as the frost has now melted off the field, but we do have two down. They don't usually run like that with the 17 Hornet. But, it didn't get very far. Oh, somebody in the comments asked me if I'm using hand loads. Yes I am. It's a 20 gram VMAX with the Vectan SP3 powder and a CCI primer. As for the charge, well, you'll have to figure that out for yourself, hey. After setting the third crew up as a decoy, I decided to see if I could call another one in using the Nordic crew call. I would never call myself an expert on a crow call, but I was quite chuffed with that. Yes, yes, I'm out setting another one up as a decoy, but if it's working for me, I'm going to keep doing it. and worked it most certainly did. Now the bird did land to the left hand side, away from the main group of decoys, but it was still an easy shot for the 17 Hornet. For someone who started out with no decoys this morning, I've got quite a collection of them down here now. Before long, unfortunately, the sheep start entering the field. There's not many of them up here, but they've got free range to the place, so there's not much I can do about it. But they always have a bad habit, as you'll see, of getting in the road either in front of the target or behind it in some way. After the sheep thankfully moved off, I get a couple more birds down. But these aren't hooded crows. These are rooks. They're roughly the same size of bird. 
but rooks don't usually do any harm to the sheep. They usually just mooch about the fields looking for earthworms, slugs and leather jackets, which is a good thing, as leather jackets, which is a small grub, kills the grass by chewing the roots underground, so the farmer likes them left alone. After a while I heard a familiar sound. It was the farmer's quad coming up the back lane, so I unloaded the rifle. Then he stopped off behind me and we had a wee discussion about how well I'd been doing so far this morning and about how stupid sheep were. Now the farmer wasn't long away and I really wasn't expecting anything to happen while he was driving around the fields checking the sheep. So I decided to relax and have a look to see what was on my phone. Only to realise that a hooded crow had landed in front of me. Thankfully the farmer was checking the sheep away in the distance to the right hand side. So I was clear to engage. The only thing was I would forgotten I had unloaded the rifle. So I had to re-chamber around before I could take the shot. That was either one very unlucky crow, or one very stupid crow. Before the farmer had finished checking the fields, I decided to set that bird up as a decoy as well, then got tucked back into the hide again. Now the morning had moved on quite a bit and the farmer had finished checking the sheep long ago when another hooded crow landed. I didn't notice this one right away as it landed well to the right hand side of the field away from my decoys. But by the time I had noticed it, it was standing far too close to a sheep that had bed it down in the field. The odd thing was it looked like it was harassing the sheep, constantly crowing at it. Then when the old girl finally stood up and went to walk off, the hooded crow quickly hopped round behind it. I didn't quite understand what was going on, it was quite odd behaviour. But as the old girl started to move off, I thought I might be able to get a safe shot in only for another ewe and her lamb to walk right in the road. It's really frustrating, but all I can do is have patience and wait to see what happens. Finally though, the sheep start moving away from the crow, giving me a safe shot, as the crow's a little further down the field than the sheep, so no worries if I pass through. The sheep hardly even flinched at the sound of the shot. I love that little 17 hornet.
I stayed on for a wee while after that last shot, probably a wee bit too long, as I found myself having a discussion with one of the locals. Nah. 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 <laughs> Boring conversation anyway. Well, after that, I decided to call it quits, as I think the crows had finally wised up. Wish I could say the same for myself though. Well, I seem to have done not too bad this morning. Seven in total. A lot better than I thought I would do, as I was here a week a weeks ago and only managed to get one crow and a couple of magpies but the farmer told me to try it again and now he's fully into lambing as he's seen ten hooded crows up here and I've managed to get seven this morning so uh, one there maybe half an hour ago circled out round but wouldn't land and now that the sheep are sort of into the field and they were even bed it down and among the decoys there I decided to call it quits that and my feet's freezing and I'm getting hungry so uh, cheer bye folks oh and that last crow I shot strange behaviour I found that out when I went to pick it up seems that you that was lying must have had a stillborn lamb as it was still covered in the uh, afterbirth and she was probably exhausted and sore and didn't want to leave it, but that's what the crow was after. Well, that turned out a pretty good result for the morning. I texted the farmer with the final results and uh, he was over the moon. I usually don't see this amount of crows up here. I've shot twos and threes before, but not as many as this, and definitely something you don't want around your lambing field. But anyway folks, I hope you've enjoyed it and until next time, take care and look after yourselves, hey.